Welcome back. This is uh, the, our teaching on the ministry of the bride and uh, subtitle, uh, Who is the Bride of Christ? And we were talking before about the bride of Christ are full-time Christians, not part-time. They're committed Christians. They're not walking with one foot in the world and one foot in the church. They're also these whose hearts will not turn back, but will stand in Christ all the way to the death. They will stand. You want to know the difference between a bride saint and Laodicea? A bride saint's going to stand. Because their love compels them to. Jesus went to the cross because of love. That's why he went to the cross. He didn't go to the cross because of a sense of duty. He didn't go to the cross because every, all of us are lovely. He went to the cross because of his love for the Father. He, his love for the Father was, was incredible and inseparable until our sins fell upon him, and that's what killed him. If our love is strong and growing stronger, then we'll make our stand. And nothing's going to divide us between us and the lover of our soul. Matthew 24 beginning at verse 12, says this, because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold, speaking of the last days. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. And then the end will come. It's the one who endures will be saved. The one who endures will be saved. It's interesting. It reminds me, and I'm going to turn there real quick to Revelation chapter 3, again, talking about the Philadelphian church, the rapture church. Verse 10, it says, Because you have kept the word of my perseverance. In other words, the word perseverance is literally steadfastness steadfastness, they stood, they made their stand, they made their stand, exactly what Jesus said in Matthew 24, but the one who endures to the end, the one who stands, let's see how the King James reads it, just uh, the one that shall endure to the end, yeah, and in the message of Philadelphia, the one who is steadfast to the end, He's going to keep from the hour of testing. But listen, the rapture happens right at the last moment. It's literally the last moment before the burning begins. It's dropping the $100 bill into the fire. It's snatched out really fast. That's what rapture or the Greek word harpazo means. Snatched out at the last second. It's looking like you're going to get burned, and you're going to get burned any second. Scripture says the bride loved not her life unto the death. Well, I know lots of people, lots and lots of people that are trying to save their life right now by taking the, you know what? <laughs> there, Joshua, I helped you. And in doing so, they're trying to save their life, their life being their job, their toys, their house, their income, etc., they're trying to save their life, but in the end, they'll lose it. Because whoever partakes of that will die. And especially when it becomes the mark of the beast, Scripture says they're, they're going to die. There's no saving them. But the one who says, I will not compromise, I am standing, and I will not partake of innocent blood, nor will I allow you to change the image of God that I was made in, I'm going to stand in righteousness on this, and I'm not going to be moved. The Lord says to that one, I will keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole world. So the promise is this. The worst thing that's coming is not losing your job. It's not losing uh, income. It's not losing position. There's something far worse coming, and it's called the mark of the beast. And they're calling for it right now. The bride of Christ is those who love not their life unto the death and they make a stand. And because they make a stand, Scripture tells us they will be kept from the hour of testing that's coming upon the whole world. 
Amen. Praise God. These are those who love Christ, whose, whose love of God in Christ compels them to pursue Him no matter what the cost. Let's go to the Song of Songs. And I hope you've uh, partaken of our Song of Songs series uh, where we talk about this uh, quite a bit. And um, I want to uh, begin at Song of Songs, chapter 5, verse 2. Reading from the NASB. It says, I was asleep, but my heart was awake. This is the bride saints. A voice, my beloved, was knocking. Open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my perfect one, for my head is drenched with dew, my locks with the damp of the night. In other words, he's, it is uh, the man Christ anointed with the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of the Father. She says, how, I have taken off my dress. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I dirty them again? So she's saying, night has come. I'm going to bed. Night has come where no man can work. That's what Jesus says it'll be like right at the end. Night will come when no one can work. And then she says, verse 4, My beloved extended his hand through the opening, through the lock. It's a hole in the door. Your hand goes through, and you have to trust people on the inside or you could lose your hand. So your hand goes through, and you have to intricately work that lock. You have to know all the combination, in other words, to open the door. My beloved extended his hand through the opening, and my feelings were aroused for him. And it's, it doesn't really convey the, the uh, intensity of this. It's literally the depth of her emotions blew up, boiled, came alive, just came totally alive. I arose to open to my beloved, and, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the bolt. So liquid myrrh is a type of dying to self. So she jumped up off of her bed. The door's unlocked. He didn't shove it open. He unlocked her heart. He didn't force it open. She went and dined to self. By the time she got off of her bed, by the time her hand came down on the door handle to jerk it open, her hand was dripping with liquid myrrh, with dying to self. The works of my hands now is only in Christ. The works of my hands is all for him. The works of my hands is because of, of incredible love for the Lord. And it came down and jerked my heart open. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and had gone. I called him, but he didn't answer me. The watchmen who make the rounds in the city found me. They struck me and wounded me. The guardsmen of the walls took away my shawl from me. So what she's saying is this, as she ran out to find him, the churches, she went to the churches to find him. Where else would you expect to find Christ, right? And find the bride. The watchmen who are the pastors found her and, and struck her and said, you're a harlot church, you're not conventional. Really? Well, I guarantee you this, the bride church will not resemble the Laodicean church. The bride church will not resemble the Laodicean church. The bride church is going to be alive on fire and shining with the presence of God. And it, when they show up at the door and say, have you seen my beloved? Is the outpouring happening here? The pastor is going to go, oh, get out of here. You're not Baptist enough. You're not Presbyterian enough. You're not this enough. You're not following our traditions. But I'm looking for my beloved. And they cast you out, Scripture says in Isaiah 66, 5 through 8. They cast you out over my namesake, over his nature's sake. They will cast out the bride from their midst. The guardsmen of the walls took my shawl from me. In other words, calling her a harlot. You're just a harlot. You're not legitimate. You're not holding to the traditions and to the doctrines which were handed down through, through, the, through Catholicism. So you're not legitimate. So we're going to take your shawl from you. You're a harlot church. In the end, though, in the end, they cry out to her. They cry out to her. And they ask this in verse 9. What kind of beloved is your beloved, O oh, most beautiful among women? What kind of beloved is your beloved that you thus adjure us? So they're saying you're the most beautiful Christians we've ever seen. 
The Spirit of God is so heavily upon you. The presence of Christ is so heavily upon you. We've never seen anybody like you. What kind of beloved, what species of beloved is your beloved? What kind of beloved is your beloved compared to our beloved? Why is your Jesus seemingly different than our Jesus? What's different in the bride saints? We'll, have, we'll cry this out. This is what they say. My beloved is dazzling and ruddy, outstanding among 10,000. Dazzling literally means as the sun. In other words, the Shekinah glory of God, the presence of the fullness of God in him. And, and ruddy is literally in Hebrew, Adam. We get the word Adam from it. It means blood in the face. He's human. The fullness of God, the one and only God who is father of us all, in the man Christ. And that's who your beloved is. And her cry to the church is, he's anointed with the fullness of God. The Shekinah glory is within him. But he's a man. He's the second Adam. He's fully human. He is our elder brother. He is our elder brother. So the bride tries to explain to Laodicea, to the church, who he is. But they don't understand. But the bride understands. The bride will pursue the groom no matter what the cost. And it doesn't matter that the watchmen on the walls take her shawl away. It doesn't matter that they beat her. It doesn't matter because love compels her. And she'll shake the dust from her feet from that house and run to the next until she finds her beloved, which she will. As she runs, the day will come when finally he says, okay, that's enough. Here I am. Come with me, my, my, my beloved. Come with me to the tops of the mountains of spices and come away. Amen. Lord bless you till we come together again.